about you know kind of how the the gang situation and the drug situation in Pasadena kind of correlate. You know what I'm saying over the years. Well, you know, see the thing about it is that. The gang, the drug, we were kind of, as gang members, we were kind of pushed out of the drug situation. Like, we wasn't really given the opportunity to be a part of the drug situation. Like, we kind of had to find our own way Having because kids. people didn't trust us as gang members. Like, right. we it's were wild. wild. Yeah. You know, they didn't know if we would try to rob them. Right. They didn't know if they'd give us drugs and we run off with them. And now they got to try to come at us. Right. And, you know, so they really didn't want to deal with us. Interesting. So I had to go... And get, I got my drugs from Honcho, which was one of the biggest dealers in, in L.A., and he was a Gray Street Crip. Okay. Right? And yeah. so that's when I started bringing my drugs from from L.A. Uh -huh. to Pasadena. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. And it was, through a, it was through a Crip. It wasn't through the people who were here right. that was running things. We didn't. We didn't. See, that, that's, that's the information we really need to know, mm -hmm. right, is that. Though you might be crazy, you might be blood, you might be pyro, right? You might even be an essay, right. you know what I mean? Right. But somewhere along the line, yeah. we got connection. That's right. You know what I mean? Right. And sure. We need to we need to have uh how can I say that uh, regard. Right. You know what I mean? For that, man. Because you know, right now, like my big brother, he's from Bounty Hunters, mm -hmm. you know. And I got a friend I went to jail with from Great. Right. You know, and I'm a big advocate of being able to cross those tracks, you know what I'm saying? Right. 